really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for joining me here again today. This is part three of the long story that I'm telling you about my so-called ruined trip to Italy and how I navigated grief and guilt um, as we traveled through Italy and the story of the novenas that I ended up doing on my trip. And maybe novena is already plural, uh, and I shouldn't be saying novenas, but that's how it comes. That's how it is in my mind. Um, so uh, I covered last time the story of visiting the Vatican, St. Peter's, and the Pietà. And the next day was a day of kind of wandering throughout Rome and somewhat intuitively, though we knew there were specific things to see. Um, we saw the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain. We wandered around Campo del Fiore, which is where there were markets taking place. People were selling flowers and vegetables. It was really beautiful and lovely that day. And on our way back to our hotel, we decided to cross the Tiber River and walk on the other side of the river through um, the neighborhood of Trastevere. And I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but um, Father William, our priest friend, told us we should visit that church because it was one of the oldest in Rome, founded in the third century originally. And he told us there was this stunning gold mosaic in the front of the church from the 12th century that he really wanted us to see. So as we were walking back, we crossed the bridge, we're walking through Trastevere, and we saw um, the church, Santa Maria de Trastevere, and decided to just go in, because all the churches in Rome are open um, basically all day long. So we wandered inside and saw a group of people gathered at the front of the church. We realized some sort of service was going on. So we tried to be re very quiet and sit in the back, but we had a great view of this amazing, incredible gold mosaic at the front of the church that was stunning to see. But as we sat there for a moment, it began to dawn on us that what we were witnessing taking place at the front of the church was a funeral for there was a casket at, at the very front of the church and the people were gathered around the casket. Um, someone was speaking and appeared to be saying prayers and we were witnessing a funeral before our very eyes. And Again, it struck me the synchronicity of how things happen, that we happened to wander into that beautiful church while a funeral was taking place. And of course, we knew no one. We had no idea who the funeral was for or what it was about. But I just got goosebumps and again was filled with that really powerful sense of being in the right place at the right time of being held and being supported in this grieving process as I watched the funeral take place. And I even wondered if perhaps Julio's funeral was taking place at the very same time back home. And I felt all this grief and love pouring out of me for the family in that very church who was mourning the death of their loved one for Julio's family and, and for myself as well. And so sitting there looking up at this incredible mosaic at the front of the church of uh, Mother Mary holding the baby Jesus in her arms, watching this funeral take place, hearing the music that was playing, um, witnessing the grief of people in the church and thinking about my connection to those back home who were grieving, I did the second novena prayer, and this is what I wrote about it. I said my novena as I witnessed that funeral and prayed for the healing and well-being of Julio's family and friends. I asked them to forgive me. I was also asking my father to forgive me for not saving both of them for not creating a miracle, for not being capable of redirecting the course of the universe, 
for being a healer that can't always heal, for being a student of love in a classroom that offers up pain as a curriculum. And though I didn't see it for a very long time, I was really asking to forgive myself for all of those things I could not do, for all of my failures and all of my humanness. We sat in silence in the church for a while and continued to observe the funeral that was happening, but then knew somehow that it it was time to leave. And so we got up and walked away very quietly from the church of Santa Maria de Trastevere. And uh, we went on to find a little gelato place, which I later learned was one of the best gelaterias in Rome. And so we sat outside and ate gelato, which was amazing, and remembered the sweetness of life and how that sweetness is also always present, even in the midst of whatever pain we're experiencing. And uh, again, it was a profound day visiting the church, seeing the mosaic, observing the funeral, and then enjoying gelato afterwards, remembering the sweetness that's always present. The very next day, we visited the Jewish quarter in Rome, and it happened to be Rosh Hashanah. And so we saw many people all dressed up and going to the synagogue to celebrate Rosh Hashanah. And it was really wonderful to just to see all the activity that was there and all the people greeting each other, friends coming together, families meeting up and all going to the synagogue. Um, but As we were leaving the Jewish quarter, we walked across a bridge called Ponte Fabricio that led to an island in the middle of the Tiber River. This bridge is remarkable because it's the oldest standing bridge in Rome, and it dates back to 62 BC, which is phenomenal that it's been standing for all this time. As we walked over it, I just imagined all of the people over those more than 2,000 years who had crossed back and forth on that bridge across the Tiber. And you can still read the original inscriptions on the side of the bridge. And it's quite an amazing soul of place in a way to be somewhere where so many thousands, millions of feet have trod over the years, over all these centuries, back and forth. And I actually returned to that bridge um, a few years later when we recreated this um, grief journey through Italy. I went back to the bridge, and it happened to be my mother's birthday, the day that I was there. So I bought a bouquet of sunflowers, and uh, which she would have loved so much. She loved sunflowers, and so... I did my own little ritual uh, of grief for my mom's death, but also celebratory for my mom's birthday and remembering her. And I dropped each sunflower into the water of the Tiber River off of Ponte Fabricio with this, it's amazing, long history. And as I stood there wondering, like, how many people have perhaps dropped flowers off of this bridge, I later learned that, in fact, there is a Jewish ritual of casting off, uh, throwing pieces of bread, symbolic of sins, into a flowing body of water while reciting prayers. And as the bread is swept away, the person experiences spiritual cleansing and renewal. And so that was really powerful for me, thinking of my sunflower ceremony for my mom and how that also tied together with my my journey of grief as I was traveling through Italy. But there was something more, even more amazing that we discovered on the island, which is that there is a hospital there named Fate Bene Fratelli. And we decided to walk around and through the first level of the hospital, both of us being doctors, we wanted to check it out. There we found memorial plaques that told this amazing story that this hospital housed people who fled the Jewish quarter 
during World War II, when Nazis came and were rounding up Jews to send them off to concentration camps, a number of them escaped across the bridge, Ponte Fabricio, to the island, to the hospital, and that the hospital housed and protected those Jews within the hospital, and they kept them in a ward toward the back of, back of the hospital. And when the Nazi soldiers came inquiring if they were holding anyone there, they told them that they were housing some Jewish people there, but all of them were affected with a deadly contagious disease called the Syndrome K, and um, they were keeping them there quarantined in the hospital so that no one else would get it. And that if the, if the soldiers got near them, they would get the same illness and would end up dying a horrible death because of the illness. So uh, we read this remarkable story at this hospital and how every person who worked at that hospital had to agree to carry this same story in order to protect the Jews who had fled there and how incredible it was that it actually worked and they were successful and they saved apparently hundreds of lives through the story that they made up to protect these people. And so there was another just very touching and powerful story that that we heard on this trip and again this was like random that we happened to walk across this little bridge because it was so cute we didn't know that much about it until later when I read about it and then we randomly came upon this hospital and we read this inspiring story and again the soul of place, of being in a place where something uh, miraculous and heroic had happened and people's lives really were saved when they were threatened and when they certainly would have been killed in the concentration camps. And to think about the bravery of the people that came together and decided to save their fellow Romans at that, at that time, the, the residents of their city, um, to save them from destruction, it it was all just so powerful. It all came together in such an amazing way, being in that place, seeing the bridge and the river and and the hospital and knowing the story. And we walked back out on the bridge once again and just sat there in awe in a way of of these these the things we learn when we study history and we go to other places and we see how life happens and the things that unfold and how people respond in the moment in times of tragedy and terror and fear and how love still rises up and it's so powerful it can motivate people to do the bravest acts and to put themselves at risk for another person and to take care of someone else and this opportunity to walk in that place to breathe in the air, to touch the walls of the hospital, to feel the energy that was present there. It was, it was so healing and so inspiring. And again, there was a sense of, that nothing is by accident. Nothing is really random, that there are these invisible lines and rays of energy and love that connect us all and our paths intersect and we don't know why we come across things that we don't understand we see things meet people travel to places we cross bridges we enter old buildings and we're inspired in ways we cannot imagine and slowly gradually one encounter at a time we're being healed of the pain that we carry when we continue to just trust our intuition and, and go where we are drawn to go and read plaques and look up stories and learn about the places where we are and the places that we're called to be. That's when just such 
powerful experiences happen that can change us forever. And uh, as I've been saying about this entire trip to Italy, it was a life-changing trip that is continuing to have ripples in my life even to this day. And um, so I want to end this story. It's a little shorter today than some of the others may be, but by saying to just be present in your life, even if you're grieving, even if you're carrying terrible pain, even if you can't imagine that you could go on another day, just be present, just open your eyes, experience what is around you, notice things, look, listen, pay attention, because it is not by accident that you find yourself where you are. It's not by accident that you meet people, that you have encounters, that you come across something that you've never noticed before. Take it all in, and you may not be able to recognize the significance of it right now, because you might not be ready to see that. It may be too much for you. Maybe you're in too much pain. And you have some more healing to do before you can see it all. But allow yourself to be inspired. Allow yourself to take in all the images and the sounds and smells and the tastes of everything around you. Knowing that each one of these little moments and little experiences are part of the tapestry of your life. And they're going to be there for you. What they're bringing to you now will continue to be there for you over time as, as you move along in your own healing and growth process. All these experiences are coming together and they're weaving this, this incredible design, this incredibly beautiful tapestry that is going to keep inspiring you. It's going to keep covering you, keeping you safe, protecting you, keeping you warm and guiding you and helping you as you continue to just get through each day, one day at a time. So remember as much as you can to simply be present and simply take in everything that is around you in the moment. And I'll be back next week with another story to tell you from this amazing trip to Italy. And I hope until that time, you are well. Remember that we're here for love. That's the most important thing to focus on. So face your fear, be ready for whatever life sends your way, and love each and every moment that you are granted to be here on this amazing planet. 